I've used the Timken product. This video is not sponsored by Timken because they didn't pay me any money. So far, uh, for my drum to disc brake conversion, I've uninstalled everything, taken it all apart, and I have cleaned out the axle tubes. If you haven't watched those videos, check them out. But today, what I'm gonna show you is how I put everything back together. So I actually pieced everything together instead of buying a kit, which I will tell you is a bad idea. All in all, I ended up spending more money uh, piecing it all together than if I had just gone out and bought a kit. Had to buy a couple things twice, and uh, so, take it from me. I recommend that you buy a kit if you're doing this. But, if you want to go through the pain that I went through, then below is a list of all the parts and the part numbers and everything that I bought. Most of the stuff I got from Rock Auto, um, bought some stuff from like Napa, O'Reilly, Junkyards, Classic Broncos, Tom's Bronco Parts. Um, so shopped around, tried to find the best prices and the best stuff. One of the things that I did wrong was I bought uh, a backing plate from a user on Classic Broncos. When I had put my hub and rotor on the spindle up against the backing plate, they rubbed. Uh, couldn't figure out what was going on, ended up just buying a new backing plate and it worked fine. I learned a lot in this process, but take it from me, if you're doing this, then buy yourself a good kit. You'll thank me later. So first step, I ground down that spot on the knuckle. So there's a little spot on there uh, that you need to grind down, maybe a half an inch, quarter of an inch, so that when you install everything, the caliper has room to move. So then what I did was I took my new spindle. Um, now I got this from a junkyard, so I pulled out the old bearing and then I seated the new bearing in there. Uh, make sure that if you're putting the new bearing in there, you want the numbers facing up. Don't put it in upside down. Um, and then what I did was I took a one and one sixteenth socket uh, and actually hammered it down with a rubber mallet and then with a hammer and you can see the magnificence of how quickly I hammer. This is real time, obviously. Then what you're gonna do is you're going to put the seal on top of that and grease it up. And then what you wanna do is put the thrust washer on your axle. I didn't buy one of these, I didn't find one, but I went to a local store around here, Randy's uh, Gear and Pinion, and uh, I picked one up there and he gave it to me pro bono, which is for free. Then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna put your seal on your axle and grease it up with some good uh, automotive wheel and bearing grease. High temperature, premium high temperature. And make sure when you put the seal on, the lip is facing out and then follow that up with the dust seal. Uh, put some more grease on there. Make sure to grease up your axle as always, good and well. Then go ahead and put your Chevy, I know, Chevy, spindle on your axle. Put it flush up against your knuckle and make sure all six holes are lined up and then pound that thing into place. Then follow that up with your backing plate. So this is the backing plate for me that uh, rubbed on the rotor. Uh, later, I bought a new one and you will never see that one because I just put everything back together after I fixed it. But you get the idea, put your backing plate on there and once you tighten those screws down, it actually cinches everything together pretty good. But I would recommend getting your spindle as close to the knuckle beforehand as possible and making sure all those screw holes line up. Now for the hubs, I was told that I could use my drum brake hubs if it was a 74, 75 Bronco. This is untrue. You can see the two hubs sitting next together. The left one is the disc hub. The right one is the drum. Now you can see there's a tapered edge on the drum and that little notch that sticks up. That keeps the rotor from sliding on there. So then what I did was I pack the hub full of grease. You don't need to pack it full full, but you need to put a good amount of grease in there to start out with. Then you wanna pack your wheel bearing. 
to do this, I got some uh, of the grease in my hand and would just pop the wheel bearing on the grease on my hand uh, until the grease started coming through the middle of the wheel bearing. And if you're fortunate like me and have chosen your color of grease as red, then it's gonna look like you murdered someone with your bare hands when you're finished. So then what you wanna do is drop your wheel bearing into the hub, then put the seal on top in place, kind of push it in place. I actually tapped it gently with a hammer in a circular motion so that it held in place. And then what you want to do is grab your outer bearing and pack it the same way that you packed your wheel bearing. So now what you want to do is put your rotor on your hub. So what I did was once I got the bolt in place, I actually tightened everything down with my wheel lug nut and then took the wheel lug nuts off once everything was tightened down uh, and then it was ready to go on the spindle. So I put my hub and rotor on the spindle, uh, then put that outer bearing in uh, and then you want to put your lock nut on. Make sure you put the lock nut on that has the little nipple on it. And the little nipple needs to point out towards you. Um, what this does is when the washer goes on, that washer kind of gets locked in place by that little nipple. So what I did with that lock nut was I tightened it down until uh, everything was good and firm, but my hub and rotor wouldn't spin. So if you do that, uh, just make sure you loosen your lock nut enough so your hub and rotor spin freely. Don't give it crazy amounts or else your wheel's gonna just do this when you're driving. And remember, this is the thing that your tire actually attaches to that holds it in place on the car. Then grab that washer and put that in place. And the washer needs to fit flush up against that lock nut so it needs to actually seat in there uh, so I had to loosen and tighten that lock nut a couple times so that uh, when the washer is following the channel on the spindle it just seats flush in there once you got that seated flush go ahead and put the outer lock nut uh, in place and tighten that one down to about 80 foot pounds then once you got that on there uh, you're gonna reinstall your locking hubs I had to buy a new one because I had to buy a new hub, so I bought a mile marker. So I built that, put that all in there, and then you're ready to put your calipers on. Uh, so I bought a fully loaded caliper. Um, so put that on and then put those bolts in there. Make sure you put some grease on those bolts. You want your caliper be to be able to slide on your bolt, so make sure you grease those up. And I challenge you, if you're making a video about your Broncos, you try not to get your big fat head in the way whenever you're trying to show something on camera. It's very difficult. So next what you're gonna to wanna to do is put your flexible brake hose, attach that to your caliper uh, with that banjo fitting. So make sure that you put those two brass washers, those brass seal washers on that banjo footing before putting it on there because that's what's actually gonna give it that seal uh, so that the brake fluid doesn't leak. So now you're gonna attach all your hoses back together um, to your hard brake lines and all of that. So at this point, it's been a few weeks since I've actually driven my Bronco. And instead of continuing to show you and document this beautiful step-by-step -step process, I said, screw it. I'm gonna finish this and take my Bronco for a drive. So I apologize because that's what I did. So yeah, at this point, uh, you're just putting everything back together. You're uh, dropping in your new master cylinder. Um, I got one off a of Ford F-250. Uh, the link is below in the description. Um, reattaching all my hard brake lines and uh, bleeding my brakes. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching and remember to subscribe using the button below. And if you wonder how I do that amazing white transition across the screen that I use in my videos, make sure to check out my friend Fultron's amazing After Effects tutorial on how to do a white transition. Good lord, there's a large spider.